Okay, so I really thought that there is kind of a dearth of 3D uh, Benchy testing on Voron V2.4s. Uh, so I thought I would uh, throw my hat in and see what happens. Um, we are going to uh, try, this will be a 400 millimeter infill print, um, 20K excels. Uh, driver temperature is pretty high, running 1.2 amps on the LDO 2 amp um, steppers, uh, running the TMC drivers pretty hard on this. Got the case fans all the way up, as you can hear. Um, mostly stock printer, though. Um, I am going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to record everything, including the home quad gantry level, home again, uh, quad be um, uh, bed mesh, 25 point bed mesh and then the print's gonna start. The print is going to have a brim and it's gonna have Z-Hop. Um, probably the biggest mod this printer has, one of the only mods this printer really has functionally, is that the uh, Z is direct drive and it is able to run almost equal speeds with the X and Y. So I'm gonna do 400 millimeters a second, 5K XL Z-Hops. And uh, that's really the only way I can run as fast as I'm gonna run, hopefully. So uh, here we go. We're going to go ahead and get this started. I am running my Z inverted from normal configuration in the Voron, but it's just basically flipping the uh, rails over. Gives me a little more vertical travel. Um, direct drive Z, as I've mentioned. Um, really, the only other physical change is uh, I am running one of the small round uh, steppers with the uh, pinion gear on it that the uh, mini Sherpas and the orbiters and whatnot are using. Help save a little bit on the weight on the afterburner. So, here we go with the brim. And I'm going to go ahead and include some of that in the time because that is a handicap, right? Hundred and fifty millimeters a second initial layer. Lower acceleration of course. I'm requesting four hundred millimeters a second infill um, at 0.25 layer height, 0.4 nozzle. I'm probably not actually getting that, but uh, I can request it for short stints and, uh, you know, get get the liquid that's in there. So, uh, kind of cheating, I guess. Wouldn't be able to sustain that on a larger print, I'm fairly sure. Uh, just out of sight, but you can see on the back of the gantry, since this is direct drive Z, I have to counterweight, counterbalance the uh, weight of the moving gantry. So there are two key backs just out of view, um, just above, and uh, there are two connectors on the back of the gantry that are um, spring tensioning some of the weight off the gantry uh, for when the power is off. So when the printer goes to idle, power goes off, uh, the gantry will droop. Uh, without some spring tension, it would just crash. Uh, stock Voron uses uh, geared uh, gearbox gearboxes in the corner. Uh, I just have a straight stepper with a pulley on it instead.
Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, this print is uh, running at 20K Excel. Um, I think Wisdom would tell you that 20K Excel is not really recommended for a printer of this girth uh, and with six millimeter belts. So uh, this is definitely a uh, kind of a one-off edge case test, right? You, you don't want to run the printer this hard for all of its life. You end up tearing up the belts. Snapping a belt, I guess. Those LDO motors are holding up really well though. Running a 1.2 amps RMS from the drivers. And this is stock cooling for a Voron, uh, which I'll just go ahead and say is not very good. Um, it's running a 2040 um, radial fan. And um, seems actually seems to be doing okay though. I mean, really. Uh, I'm helping it a lot by having the doors open up, right? There's no chamber temperature. If I ran this with chamber temperature, it would look like Picasso. Um, I'm running a Fadus Dragonfly, uh, 50 watt, 24 volt heater, uh, standard uh, therm thermistor. Um, I am running high temperatures, running 290 degrees. Uh, this is a uh, Keen Village Plastics uh, Black ABS. You would normally run this, I normally run this at uh, about 250. It's okay so far, I don't see any indications of uh, layer shift would be the uh, indication of pushing it too hard uh, short term to be jumping, uh, jumping over on layer shift. Watch carefully, you can see it is starting to do a little more Z hops. Once it starts doing the um, getting off the bow a little bit and doing the uh, cockpit front and back, you'll, you'll see it do a lot more Z hops. Printer's running six of the uh, LDO uh, two amp 0 0.9 degree uh, motors, uh, four for the Z corners uh, X and Y. And it's running a um, again a uh, little round stepper pinion stepper motor uh, for the uh, extruder, which is obviously behind the where the fan is there where the Warren logo is. So, just, uh, Stepping motor in the back. Uh, only running it at 0.25 amps. I've been told that I could uh, probably run that a little higher, but I don't. Um, only half a millimeter of retraction. I don't do much retraction. Sorry, keep missing that. What else am I missing here? Uh, 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle, uh, 0.25 layer heights. That's really it. Got to really dig into the uh, Cura machine defaults to uh, let it let you run this fast. I did turn down my. Um, I turned up the uh, line segment deviation and a few other settings to uh, help it uh, slice and uh, print a little faster. 
Um, this is running a um, flipper on a Raspberry Pi with uh, two uh, SKR boards, so it's plenty of processing power. So I don't really shouldn't have toyed with it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't really slow down for more G code. It's looking not not, not horrible right now. question, the real test is going to be the smokestack, but I do have minimum layer time in the smokestack, so hurting me a little bit on the uh, Vinci time, I guess, but uh, that way I'm guaranteed the smokestack turns out right. I think I may have said uh, a second or maybe a half a second minimum layer time and a uh, pretty high minimum speed, 100 millimeters a second speed. starting to do more and more Z-hops now, right? This is the part that uh, I think probably a lot of people have uh, challenges with. They uh, skip the brim and just do a little skirt and then, you know, slap the bottom down, end up making a potato mess the bottom, and, uh, you know, still, when you get up this high up on the print, you've got these accelerations, uh, you know, a little tiny bit of curling and that nozzle hitting and not sprint right off. But um, if you're hopping over it, it's not, not really a problem. Previous layers are still a little mushy, you know. You hop over it and start on top of that layer, it's good to go. You can just uh, run, your, run your printer up to the speed at which it uh, skips layers, uh, does layer shifts. I hate I couldn't quite make 10 minutes. It's aggravating. But uh, this, this build, this, this printer build is just not, I don't think it's really capable of, I think it would be tough to go sub 10 minute on this printer. I don't care how you tune it up, it's gonna to be tough. It's, a, it's, it's got a lot of weight, comparatively to some of the other speed champions out there, right? I mean, this thing's got like, uh, oh, what has it got? Uh, something like three or four meters of, uh, of XY belt. 300 millimeter volume, so it's uh, four times that. So it's uh, got two and a half meters of X and Y built. It's incredibly fast for that size of a printhead, it really is. It's a lot of plastic. And uh, MGN, uh, MGN 12 rail, single rail on the front. So it's pushing a pretty big block. Coming up on the end. minutes 40 seconds I think that's pretty respectable let's see I mean it's not the best benching in the world let's be honest right but um really I mean there's there's some cooling errors but you know what it's structurally all there so I, I think that's actually that's actually pretty good all right hope you guys enjoyed